questions? There we go. All right. So thank you guys for joining again. Our focus this afternoon is the It's Learning Assignment tool and really using it in new ways, exciting ways. Hopefully you'll get some new opportunities out of this. Um, and we'll talk about Google integrated assignments as well and even some more creative uses with that that I saw in teachers courses during e-learning that kind of springboarded this session into being a little bit more creative. So goals for this, learn how to use the assignment tool and using it to provide students with options, especially. Uh, the assignment tool is great in that it's so flexible that you can give students lots of resources to help them develop their understanding, but then you can also give them lots of options and how they respond to your actual assignment that you're giving them. So I really like this tool. I kind of, I always call it a Swiss army knife of its learning, or I call it the hidden gem of its learning because it's so flexible and you can use it in so many ways, no matter what grade level subject that you teach. There's a little bit of something for everyone in this tool. So first glance at the assignment tool. Obviously it's very great for assignments and to collect student work in one place. So that's one benefit. It has flexible options for students and for teachers. It's a great way to send out templates or scaffolded resources to students. So if you're trying to help students learn how to write an essay or take notes, it's a great way for that. Um, it's also helpful for sharing checklists as well. I think I'll just share a paper link. And there's even more uses beyond that and we'll look at some of those today. Right, so it's helpful if you have its learning pulled up if you want to play along with me. But again, if it's easier for you to just kind of sit back and watch, you can do that as well. Whatever works best for you is fine by me. That's not right. I don't want to end the meeting. This is the only thing when you go into screen share mode, it's hard to find the chat. There we go. Everyone should have slides now. All right, so let's just reflect here for a second and think um, you can either share via the chat or you can talk. How have you used the assignment tool on its learning or what specific features have you used? So most of us have probably used it for an assignment because that's kind of what the name implies, but what are some unique ways that you used it? And then if you have any specific idea that you wanna get out of this session, feel free to share that as well so I can make sure that we cover it. So I'll give you about 30 seconds or so. You can either type in the chat box or you can share by just saying it out loud. All right, anyone wanna share what features of the assignment tool you've used and or you have something specific you wanna to learn today? I haven't used it at all okay. since I've been in kindergarten. So um, I'm just here to learn to see what there is. So I know a little bit more better and more better. That doesn't make sense, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I can just, I have feel. used assignments on, uh, during e-learning and uh, I literally used to go through like I first opened my courses and the specific course and then I go to add and then assignments. That worked well, you know. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. But, so you just, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say awesome to what she was saying. <laughs> I used it for like, um, I made a vocabulary template in Google Docs and then, but gave it to my kids in its learning assignment and I was able to change it, you know, for different parts of the novel that we were working on. Um, I've used it for writing assignments. Um, I'd like more information about how, um, 
how to manage the grading and the different which features are better to choose grading and um, this might be another session but I'm interested in um, the best way to put common assessments learning through and it's learning assignment maybe if that's possible or not for our um, you know just the best way to do that I'm not sure it's the, it's, be, it's not best for all. Well, there's an assessment tool, right? There's yeah. an assessment tool. So I'm getting mixed up. I'm tired, but anyway. Well, we have a session focused on the assessment tool, so you can kind of so do that. Yeah. Compare both of them and see which one you think. Sure. And I don't know enough about common assessments for elementary to feel like I'm the best one to answer that question, but I can give you some tools that might help answer with your background on that and the sure, that's okay that's okay and it might be too much for today anyway all right another session we will see thank you guys for sharing that's helpful so that i know to focus on a couple of specific things when we move ahead um there's nothing worse than going to a pd and sitting there and knowing you want to get something out of it specifically and then you sit there for an hour and then it doesn't happen so then there's myself and want to make sure this is as meaningful as possible for you okay so the assignment tool, kind of like what I was getting at, is a little bit more, and not a little bit, much more than just a Dropbox for student assignments. So on this screen are examples that I found throughout teachers' courses and subject areas and BCSC. And I wanted to show everyone this so you can get an idea of all of the different ways you can use assignments. So some of these are Google integrated assignments, like what Ann was talking about to give students Google resources within the assignment tool. Other ones are showing students videos and then having them respond with a video, which is great too. And then some of them were just having students complete a short little quiz or survey through that tool. So there's lots of different ways you can do this and really the sky's the limit on this tool. It's just, you're limited by what ideas you come up with. So if you just keep thinking, I want to try to use this, it's learning tool in another way, you're probably gonna open more doors with this tool than any other. So I am going to give you the warning here that I'm going to abandon these slides soon. The next series of slides in this slide deck are really just screenshots of the actual process I'm going to show you. So you have my slideshow, you can save it in your drive and have access to it and kind of use that as a reference. I did link at the end of my slideshow several video tutorials and written guides that go along with a lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about today. So if you wanna watch a shorter video section rather than watching this whole thing over again, these are some of the main points from it. So from basics with the assignment tool to making a Google integrated assignment to using it to make checklists for students or templates or anything along those lines, it's all there. And there's even more linked here. So you have those pieces as you need them. So diving into its learning, we're gonna start just basics, making an assignment within your course. So the assignment tool is actually the most frequently used tool in all of its learning for good reason. It, it's a very flexible tool um, and it's its learnings. I feel like it's the tool that they're probably most proud of because of that. So if you are in your course, the add button in the top right corner, like Arpita was mentioning this, she just clicked this button and you can start building an assignment right from there. So it's the first one that comes up because it's so popular. If you're already in your resources tab and click add, it shows up as an option there to start building. Right, so we're in a teacher view right now of this assignment, and there's a lot of different buttons and things off to the side. I usually don't focus on those first. For me, I wanna focus on what exactly I want my students to do, which is over here in the assignment builder. So you do have to give it a title. It's learning used to require you to add a description, which was intended for you to write instructions or reminders for students there. It's not a requirement anymore, but it's, I would strongly recommend doing that. And what's nice here is that you have this rich text editor. So you have the ability to add in tons of multimedia to make your assignment even better. So if you're an elementary teacher that teaches kindergarten and first grade and second grade, it might be more helpful or more, I guess, relevant for those students to have a video of you explaining the instructions rather than a paragraph of written text there because they're still learning how to read. So you can record a video here and insert it directly into this assignment. And then they have the ability to also respond with all of these options too, which I think is key is that 
any option you have to, when you're building this assignment, the students have to answer it. So they can do an audio recording, they can insert and upload a picture, video recording, um, add a Google file if they wanted to. They have all those options as well. So this is typically where you would write out your instructions. So Social studies is the example I always do. So if you've ever sat in one of my trainings before, I always fall back on this one because I just know I still have all these saved in my Google Drive for easy access. So that's where you can write your instructions. Um, if you don't see this toolbar of buttons, sometimes it's hidden and it's hit or miss. I don't know why it randomly shows up for some people and why it doesn't. And it's the same thing for your students too. I feel like nine times out of 10 when my students went to go answer an assignment, this is what it looked like for them. And so they initially just, their inclination is to think, oh, I have to type out a response every single time when they don't. So it's helpful if you coach your students at the beginning of the year that always click that more option. There's more fun things there for you to use so you don't feel like you're limited with just writing things. And the uh, course template I showed you all this morning that had some of those student guides, it shows them how to do that. So you can even reference them to that. And it shows them how to add audio, video, pictures to an assignment response. You won't have to technically reinvent the wheel and post them all on that on your own. There's some resources there for you. All right, so I could add my assignment description there. Um, and then if I, that's all I wanted to add for this assignment, I'm good with my setup here. It's gonna show you the most simple way to make an assignment first. And then over here on the right hand side, these are your assignment settings. So these are only things that are visible to you as the teacher. This is visible to the student over here on the left. So scheduled visibility makes it so where your students can see this assignment and respond to it within a certain amount of time. So if you want to have this open for a week, then you can schedule that to be open for a week. Typically, I would just pass over that step and I would just pick a deadline, but it, again, it's up to you. You have the ability to schedule it to be open and then close at a certain time. So you, it is helpful if you put a deadline there. Um, you don't have to, but I always would do that just so it was a reminder for my students. And then I would usually write it over here in the description so they see it multiple places. You can close it after the deadline. And if you close it, that means that students can't respond. So they can't turn in any late work, which my experience was not a good thing to close that because you always have a few that are either absent or forgot about it and need to be able to turn that in. Um, and what's helpful is that when you look at the student responses and results from this assignment, it indicates who turned it in after the deadline. So you know who had it in time and who didn't. Where it says this activity is homework, I, you don't have to check that box. If it's homework, then it shows up on the student's calendar which most students don't even use. So you can check that if you want to, but you don't have to. I think the calendar tool is a little bit better if you're a Microsoft user and you use Microsoft Office products in its learning and your school has Office 365, but we don't have, we don't have that cloud-based version of Microsoft and BCSE, so I don't think it's as relevant. But if you want a one-on-one -on, -one on that, I can give you more resources. The next thing is standards. Um, when you set up your course at the beginning of the year, you can add standards to your course. It's in more in course settings. And then after you've added state standards to your course, then anytime you make an assignment or make a resource on its learning, then you can add those standards. So I had added seventh grade social studies to this class in my course settings. And I can walk everyone through that if you want to see how to do that too. Hands on your head, yes. Yeah, I can do that. Um, so if I've added this to my course already and I select add standards, then I can mark on here what standards this specific assignment is going to cover. So I added my standards there and students can see that. Adding an assessment scale, these are all specific ones that as a system admin we've added in for all its learning users in BCSE. So some of these, a lot of these were added in here for summer school because they did all of their grading and everything online. Um, so that's why these ones are in here. You can use them if you want, but again, that's more of a specific purpose for why those were created. So when it comes to grading with the assignment tool, 
I didn't necessarily enter a ton of grades on here. I would put comments and feedback on here for my students to see. And then the actual grades went into PowerSchool. And I do have some exciting news that might actually make more of us put comments and grades on its learning. Uh, there's been several years of us, if you've been here for when we first got its learning, always saying, oh, maybe one day we'll have grade connection between PowerSchool's grade book and its learning. And it's always just been like, maybe next year, maybe next year. It's in a test mode right now. They've built it, they've made that connection. We're practicing putting in sample grades and data right now. So the next thing is just to have a school be the guinea pig on it. But I do think the only way we can have that is with secondary. I don't think that we can do that with the elementary one because of how customized the grade book and the growth model report card is in PowerSchool. That was a whole separate coding software they had to do just to build that grade book. But I'm not 100% on that, but we at least have something more concrete than we've ever had before. But you can still use its learning to give students feedback. Other settings that are helpful over here is the peer and self-assessment. So these are kind of some fun ones. Maybe if you're doing this assignment as a rough draft for students for essay writing, that's just kind of what my mind gravitates to, or it's a rough draft for a project or a presentation. Um, peer assessment and self-assessment. Peer assessment will randomly take all the students' responses on the day of the deadline and then give them to other students in the class. And the students don't see on their end whose work that they're grading. It just shows up as anonymous to them. And the student that gets the feedback doesn't see who gave them that feedback. But you as the teacher see more of those details. So again, that works if you set a deadline and you close it after the deadline. So if you have a student who wants to submit work late, you'd really have to tell them, make sure you turn that in on that specific day. Otherwise, your work's not going to be sent to someone else um, on the day that we probably do that peer assessment in class. So that's a really, that's a cool tool. There's a teacher at Northside, a seventh grade teacher, that really started using that a lot last year for his essays for his students, and he really, really liked it a lot. So I know of one specific success story with him where he used it almost regularly whenever they did a writing assignment, and he liked it. And self-assessment just allows the student to reflect on what they're doing, and they have a comment box that shows up for them when they've turned in the assignment for them to think about what they did. Results, that means that if you give students feedback, you write a comment on their work that they can see it. If you don't check that, then I don't know why you'd write a comment anyway, because they wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, group activity is another cool one, but it can get kind of messy at times. I'm just gonna warn you. So with group activity, um, that means that students in your class are randomly put together in groups from its learning. Its learning makes the groups for you unless you go through and set up course groups yourself. And when they go to turn an assignment, only one of them has to turn it in. So it's great for a group project. You could do that. Um, but if you're using a Google integrated assignment with that, I will say that we've discovered last school year when someone was using this that they did a group activity and they wanted to have a google doc that made a copy of the google doc for every student so it did that but it only gave editing access to the one student that was working on that document it didn't give it to the other ones and it wouldn't let them share it out so i because it's learning was considered the owner of the file because it's learning technically made that google doc so it wouldn't let them share it with others which just ended up being a mess and I couldn't even go in and do anything about it myself. So if you're doing group activity, I don't recommend using its learning to make the Google Doc or Google resource for the students. It's great for other things, but just not for that specific feature. Anonymous is good for like a survey or if you want to get written or comments from students because it hides their information from you. So if you want to be a totally anonymous assignment, then you can use that. Um, plagiarism control, checks for plagiarism, and it also works on a Google Doc. So if students are writing an essay and they turn in their essay on a Google Doc through its learning, it will scan through that Google Doc and see if they plagiarized and give you a report on that. And then mandatory, not mandatory. If the assignment is mandatory, then which it's default to that, it will show up as a task list whenever the student signs on to its learning. If you check it as not mandatory, then it won't show up as something that they have to do. 
So that's just kind of the lowdown here on these settings here on the left. When you're first getting started with this, Emily, I would say that I would keep things very simple over here. Um, just your deadline, keep it open. And then if you wanted to add results, I would do that. Get your feet wet with it a few first few times and then you can dive into more if you would like. So if that is my basic assignment, I'm not add anything fancy to it, then I would just click create. It always takes it a second, but I'm still in teacher view. And these are my students in my class. And here's the assignment description. And when they go to answer it, if they turn it in, then I would see it as submitted. So I can filter it, sort it by my class period. If I have lots of students, I can filter it by if they turned it in or if they didn't turn it in, if they turned it in late. So if you have lots of students in your classes, like I know, our pizza has well over 100, then this is helpful to sort it through that. And you can even see if you've reviewed it or not, if you gave feedback to them. So I'm actually going to, ooh, I wonder if it'll let me do this in this tab. I have a fake student account that I use sometimes just to show you from the student view. So I'm going to pull that up. But I have a bad feeling it's going to try and log me out of this other account. All right, do you see this page that has Richards on it? Okay, I'm in a new browser, so I didn't know if it would let me, if I share my screen correctly, learn something new. All right, so this is a student view on what this looks like. So if I go to resources and I see the assignment, I can see the deadline standards there. And for me, I would just click answer. Again, it always defaults to that where you don't have all the buttons. So it's a very quality answer. Submit. And then the students have the ability to edit their response up until that deadline. After they've turned it in, they don't have the ability to edit that anymore. And they can always delete their assignment if they need to. So going back over to my teacher view, can you guys still see this? Or is it still stuck on the student? It's on the student. Okay. Thank you. All right, so it should be on teacher view now. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just gonna show you, now that that student responded, it shows that the student responded. And when it says not corrected, that means that I haven't gone through and given them feedback. So I can sort it by that or not submitted. And then if I wanted to give a student feedback, I would click their name. I see their answer. And then over here on the right is where I can add my feedback to the student. So you have the ability to add files. So if you have a rubric, maybe it was a Google Doc or it's a Word document that you were taking notes on as a rubric and you want to attach that, you can and put it there. I can do an audio recording, which is nice too, because sometimes it's really helpful for students to hear your thinking and your thought process on your feedback rather than just reading the actual text. Um, and if you click this little pencil button, it even opens up this whole menu. So you can technically even give your students a video response as well, which honestly, grading takes a lot of time. I kind of felt like giving video response was something that I just really missed out on doing when I was in the classroom. And that would have saved so much more time than always typing out something and studies have shown that if you give students video responses, they actually are more receptive to your feedback than just text response. So you have the ability to do that within its learning. It doesn't show up right away here. You have to click this pencil and then it brings up that rich text editor where you can put anything and everything that you want to. And after I type out my feedback, you can click save. Um, you can also change it, the status here so that you know you gave feedback to them. 
Um, you can even tell them that they didn't meet your expectations so they can even resubmit it if they need to. I'll leave that as satisfactory. Good job. Save assessment. All right, and I can go back and edit that as well if I wanted to. This box below it, this discussion button, this opens a conversation between you and that student where the student can respond to any comments you write here. The student can't respond to this feedback up here, but if you use discussion, it kind of opens up dialogue between the two of you. So if you have a question about something before you want to give them feedback, you can ask it here and they actually get a notification. They get an alert on their profile that you said something so they can go and see that and respond. The only thing though is that you don't have all those rich text features so you can't have like a video conversation with a student here an audio recording it's primarily text-based but again it's kind of it's nice that you have the ability to do that within this tool that's just kind of the uh basic in making an assignment your settings and then responding to students and giving feedback next thing we're going to look at is making a google integrated assignment which is a pretty powerful way of giving your students resources and giving them copies of something so you don't have to train them on doing file make a copy or you get a million emails where they're requesting access to something instead i know that happened a lot to me when i had my seventh graders and they were using google docs was you get an email every single time and you're just like oh my gosh when you have 150 students it was like i cannot do this i'm going to max out my inbox just from this one assignment i'm doing in class all right, so if I wanted to make a Google integrated assignment, what I'm actually going to do is just edit the one that we'd already been making. And you have two options with Google integrated assignments. There's two ways you can add a Google resource. You can add a Google resource as just a piece for a student to view before they go in and they answer the assignment. So I kind of think of this as a great way to kind of give students a last chance or a last reminder of your slideshow your reference material, the things they need to know before they go in and they answer it. So to do that, I'll click add files. You have some options here. Technically, it doesn't have to be a Google resource. You can add something that's saved on your computer. So if you have even a video or a Word document, you can add it there. The first time you try to add something from your Google Drive, it's going to ask, whoa, I don't know why it's trying to translate things into German. Huh, I don't know German. Could be bad. Um, the first time you try to use this, it will ask if it's learning can have permission to your Google Drive and you'll click allow and that just sets it up here so that you can search through your Google Drive and add things. When you select something here, it's helpful in that you have your Google Drive, but you also have any team or shared drives there or items that have been shared with you. So if you're not the owner of a resource, but you want students to use that. So if you're working as a team and one of the other teachers sends it to you, you can always make your own copy of it or you can just go to shared with me and then use someone else's um, worksheet or slideshow to give to your students. So for me, I'm going to look, I can find the slideshow from way back when. I find my resource and I'll click select. And then a little bit further down the page, there's always a little bit of scrolling, right? There it is. Yep, it's set up to where students can view. Okay, now there usually is a drop down menu there that lets you change it. And I think what I need to do here is I actually should have not had that fake student respond to that assignment. But now it's not letting me edit. We're going to delete that. Okay. So I can leave it as that, and it's good to go. The student can view that assignment so they can go in and answer it however they want. So that's one way you can add a Google resource. The other way you can add a Google resource, or if you want to add additional resources to an assignment, is you can add Google Docs or slides, forms, drawings, sheets. The only thing you can't add is this, is a Google site. And I do know that because I had a teacher ask the other day and I tried and you can't. If you add another resource, it can make a copy for the student. And when it makes a copy for the student, it gives them their own editing access to it. It names the Google resource as the student. So you don't get any no name or untitled documents turned into you. It's always named after that student. And then you can always go and watch them work in real time on that resource as well. So if I wanna add in, maybe I have a specific vocab note-taking sheet that I want my students to use. And 
I don't want them to kind of just throw a bunch of stuff in a doc. I want to give them a scaffolded version of that where I've kind of given them some ideas on how to answer it. I'll go to Google Drive. Look for my file. Select. Still not let me do that. I might have to make a new assignment. Hold on one moment, everyone. I think I actually might have an example up here. Is still being crazy. Sorry, everyone. I know they were doing an update to Google today, and I'm hoping that's not what is causing some of the weird stuff that's going on with me right now. Okay, there we go. It only took me three tries. Sorry, everyone. I promise you I'm usually a little bit more slick than that. Okay, so I added that resource and that's the one that I want my students to be able to edit. So in this drop down, I'm going to select students, not students can view, I'll select make a copy for each student. And then I'll do create. That usually does take it a second. And while that's loading, I'm going to go over to student view so you can see what the student sees, which is helpful. All right. So we're in student view now. And when I go to this activity, I'm not in student view. All right. Okay. On your guys' screen, does it say answer assignment? Okay, awesome. Okay, so what the student does when they go to answer this assignment, they'll click answer assignment. And then it usually does take it a second. And what it's doing is it's learning is making a copy of that Google Doc that I added there for the student and putting it in their Google Drive. So I actually do have to sign in. your students, the first time they do this, they'll have to click their Google account when it pops up and they're just giving its learning permission to their account. Just a word of advice though, when your students do this, make sure that they select their school account and they don't have other Google accounts on that device because sometimes it will randomly pull whatever account it wants over the sun or they might click the wrong one. And then they pair that account with its learning and then every time its learning tries to make a document for them, it puts it in that other account instead of the one they might want. I can always, if you ever have an issue with a student doing that, you can email me and it takes me like five minutes to go in and fix it. It doesn't take very long. It happens every now and then. Um, usually, if a, sometimes if a student has a name change during the school year too, we have to go back and make sure that their new account is the correct one that's paired. 
But when I make this assignment, it names it after the student. So my fake student is named after my dog. So that's why it kind of has that bizarre name there. Um, but it names the document after the student. And now the student can go through, they can edit, they can work on that, do whatever they need to do. And when the student goes back to answer the assignment, they don't have to look in their drive to attach anything. It keeps it right there for them on its learning. So they can either just open it there or whenever they're finished, they click submit and then the teacher has it. On the teacher side of things though, what's really amazing is that you can technically on the teacher side, watch them work in real time on this assignment as well, which is nice. Because if you think it's a Google Doc, they're working on it, it's great. And as soon as that student had clicked answer assignment, it made that doc for them. I, as the teacher, have access to that document now too in a couple of different ways. So I can go to this Nile River vocab assignment, and when it loads, if I click on the student's name, currently as it saved as a draft there, and it loads me their draft view so I can see what they're doing, what they have done. In this case, they don't have very much done, but I could see that. And if I click this arrow here out to the side, it opens it up in a new window. So I can access their work through there. The other thing, and the other way this is done, you have a lot of students and you wanna see a lot of responses at once. In your Google Drive, whenever it's learning makes a Google integrated assignment, it shares that with you automatically. So see, it shows up there already in my drive. So it's learning is technically the owner of these files because it's the one making them, which is also helpful because it will shut off students access to these and make them just view only once the deadline approaches so they can't go back and work on things after a certain point in time. But what's nice is that if you go to shared with me, it makes a folder based on whatever you name that assignment on in its learning. So if I click my folder, I have two things in there. I have all of my student answers. And then I have my template, so my original copy, so I never lose my original work and resource that I used. And that's all in just shared with me. Usually it's the first thing that pops up. And if you click answers, then I would see all of the students in my class. So if I have 20 different students working on this at once, I can click on one of them, any one of them, and just work from there. And if you like to give students feedback while they work, you have editing access to this document as long as the students do um, and you can add comments and feedback on it when the assignment closes and they lose editing access to this document you lose editing access as well but you can still provide feedback to the student through its learning and so i had some teachers ask me questions on so if they are working on this in a google doc like is that okay for them to submit it is that considered that they've done the assignment? Do they have to submit it if they already opened the doc? I would have personally gotten in the habit of telling my students that you always have to go back through its learning and click submit so that I know you're done. That's just personal preference. Felt like if I got them in a the habit of doing that for everything, then that was a win. So, <laughs> so that is how you use Google Integrated Assignments. And that, that is probably one of the things that if you're really wanting to start using its learning assignment tool more often, I would recommend that one because I think it's pretty easy to use and it's just helpful if you're giving students resources. And there's lots of different ways you can use it. There are some teachers who use it to send out um, kind of like a framework for writing an essay, so kind of like an outline for an essay. Other teachers have used it to do notes like what I showed you there in that example. Some have used it for a slideshow. So if you have a slideshow template and you want your students to format a certain way, maybe they're still learning how to build those presentations, you can do it in that way. You can add a Google slide and it makes a copy for them. Others, and I really liked this idea, borrowed this idea from Corey Williams. She's the UDL facilitator at the high school. But what she did is have the idea of making checklists for students using this. So if you maybe had a lot of tasks for the week for the students, you can make a Google Sheet, and within Google Sheets, you can add little check boxes. You can even this with a Google Doc or even a slide if you want. The check boxes kind of look a little bit cleaner on a sheet than some of the others, I will say. Um, and you can use the make a copy for each student to give students their own version of a checklist that they can cross off their work for. And there's a written guide and video there 
it walks you through how to do that. You don't have to be a Google Sheets guru to be able to do that one. Really easy, just a formatting thing. You click in a cell, there's an option to make it a checkbox. I did wanna show you how to add in standards to your course. Backtracking, I remembered I said I was gonna do that and then I got away from it. Um, so if I'm in my course, and I wanna do that in my course, not BCSE Connect, it's under more and settings. And it's the standards button. And if I do find, it brings up the mo it brings up its learnings database of state standards. So initially it'll just bring up Bartholomew, which is some of the ones that are already loaded there. But if you click this back button, it takes it up a level. Actually, no, it's a drop down. My bad. If you do national repository, it'll bring up state standards. And I know they were updating some of these because some of the Indiana ones were not up to date. You can pull standards from here. And what I would do is I would just find your subject, your grade level. And I just do the whole folder instead of clicking this. If you click into this, it does individual folders, um, which I guess is OK for this one because it breaks it down by grade level. But if yours is outlined as like grade 6, then it will add all of the grade six standards there instead of having to go through and do it individually. If I wanted to add that, insert and close. And it takes a minute. But now whenever I build something on its learning and I see the option to add standards, it will give me the ones that I just added. Those are some pretty old standards from 2006. I think they probably need to update those ones. All right, Let's see, there are some other examples on there. I think we actually got through. Yeah. All the examples there. And you had mentioned that you wanted to learn about grading and feedback. Did this give you some stuff or do you want me to go through anything more? Are there any lingering questions that you have? No, this helps. And and I did most of this. I didn't add standards, but I did most of this this year. Um, but I have a question. One thing my kids got hung up on in the beginning is they would save their assignments as a draft, and not realize they had done that. And so then, you know, they got all out of sorts. So that's something I'll probably teach and go back over. But if it's saved as a draft, they can get back into it. Yes, as long as it's not the deadline. Yep. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's good that they are at least saving it as a draft because there's been, I knew a couple of teachers when I taught at Central who had students who were working on pretty lengthy written responses and a Google, not a Google, but in and it's learning assignment. And the kids would just close their Chromebook when class ended and then walk away. And the Wi Fi signal in the hallway was not the strongest. So they lose Wi Fi and then they lose all the stuff they type. Oh. And they'd never click save as draft, so they had to start over. Okay, terrible. but so Google doesn't save it as you go when you're in its learning? I guess not. Google does, but Google when, does. These students were just writing in its learning text box. And oh, they saved it as a draft. So we need to be sure they know if it if it's if it's Google, it'll save it for you. But if it's it's learning, you've got to save it. So that's. Yeah. A, Thing to teach in the very beginning. I would just train them to always write it in Google and then you can always copy over whatever you need to so that you you know that, that it's saving always and you can maybe yeah in there. I know I do yeah. that for, if I have to fill out anything online that is paragraphs of writing I always write it in a Google Doc because I don't trust technology and I'm always afraid that if I don't that my responses won't get saved or I'll lose it and so I always have access to it. Right. Emily, you were just getting your feet wet with the assignment tool. Do you have any questions? No, I don't think so. I really like the video 
responses mm -hmm. and being able to embed like a video to give instructions like I can see and I can like I could see that being helpful in working for a kindergarten student mm -hmm. um, and even just um, I like the ability of using the Google Docs because I could see like creating assignments just practicing on typing like hey type your name like those kind of things mm -hmm. um, just to give those introductions I think I've always been so overwhelmed by its learning that I never thought it was really possible for kindergarten, but now after a whole nine weeks of e-learning and then this, it, it's, it's getting the wheels spinning. So I appreciate this. Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely think that I wish it's learning had the ability to have like an early learner look to it yes. times. Yeah. My sister is a first grade teacher and she taught, she did her student teaching here in BCSE. So she had to use its learning with her students. And she was just like, they don't know how to read. Yeah. And this is a little, yeah. she got to where she's using pictures and videos all the time. But mm. yeah, I, I was never an elementary teacher, but I totally understand that after being in a kindergarten classroom one day with a teacher and seeing how students were typing, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I get it now. It's I a whole understand. other world. It's a <laughs> yeah, you used to teach kindergarten. kindergarten, didn't you? Yeah, I yeah. did. Okay. I did. I, I definitely had a newfound appreciation for <laughs> early, early elementary teachers. Oh, it's a great place to be. I will never just say, but, oh, it's easy to sign them in. No, now I know. Mm -mm. It's not. No. It's Which, not. That's almost a barrier, really. Yeah. Which, is that changing or is that staying the same? I think it's staying the same. There okay. were, there was, I wasn't in the group talking about that at the end of it. Okay. There was some... I think, I hope I'm not off base here and giving false hope, but I feel like I heard a conversation at one point <laughs> that was talking about some type of easier sign on for kindergarten students, specifically since there's going to be more Chromebooks floating around that would almost be like the Chromebook in kiosk mode where you don't have to sign into the Chromebook every single time. Oh, uh, that would be, yeah. You would still have to sign into its learning, but there isn't its learning app that does single sign on. So I don't know if you have it in kiosk mode if that eliminates that. There was so many details. I don't know where they are. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. I was just being nosy. <laughs> they, going back to the uh, video feedback, I gave my kids a lot of audio feedback and they liked that, but they would just, they would love video feedback, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. It, if you're wanting to give video feedback, and so technically you could do the video feedback with that little feedback box on its learning and do that there but if uh, you want to be able to give back and forth between you and the student video feedback yeah we, we did purchase this isn't it'll be on an email soon but we did buy everyone screencast screencastify on like <gasps> the school year yeah so you can yeah so you can still use that and oh just, my gosh that's, that's amazing great. Yeah, uh, that that will be huge help, even for parents, just to be oh. able to make those videos to teach parents how to do this. Oh my! Gosh. Oh, absolutely! Oh yeah! Yes! Oh yeah! Yep! Yay! That's awesome. When e-learning ended, and I was looking at all the list of tools that we had free access to, and I was like, if there's any tool that I know we need to keep, there was several at the top of my list, but that one was like number one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. What else was on your list, Brittany, just out of curiosity, that you thought was really, really effective? Because you saw the whole gamut of free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't even, there was even more out there that I didn't even share with everyone because it just got to a point to where I was getting so overwhelmed. With it's too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All these vendors coming out of the woodwork like, hey, I have you. And I'm like, oh, oh it was their big opportunity. <laughs> it was crazy. Oh. But, uh. The other one that I thought teachers use really well, and specifically math teachers, because sometimes it's really hard for secondary math teachers that use some of those equation editors and things like that, mm -hmm. some tools that give them all the buttons and functions mm -hmm. they need. There was one called Go Formative, and I had used okay. that a little bit when I was in the classroom. And it was, it's like a, can be a quiz tool, can be a polling tool, exit activity, bell ringer, and it has the math functions and good reporting built into it so it was one that a lot of teachers use specifically the math teachers liked it it was just expensive. that might help I mean it was expensive you know. at the district level to buy uh, okay 
So we don't have it. We don't have that one. Okay. We do have Screencastify. That's awesome. Are pizza, are there any questions I can answer from you? I'm good. I was gonna say, you started getting into the assignment tool quite a bit during. I mean, I don't know, some voice problem or something is, yes. Yeah, sorry, what did you say? No, I just said that I know that you were getting into using the assignment tool. Yes. I use, during, I really use a lot during e-learning. It was definitely helpful. Yeah, of course, <laughs> it was helpful. Well, all right, everyone. So I'm actually going to stop recording.